Remember before YouTube videos had paid ads? Remember when every other video had Down With The Sickness playing? Remember when people would repost trailers with end credits crediting their selves at the end of it? Pupridge Farm remembers. Hey, you'd better give that back now, child. That's mine. That's my bread. Ooh, a cookie. <laughs> I'm going to take you on a trip back in time, to a time that is very important to me, one of my first experiences with hype. And if you're anything like me, there'll be a few times on this trip where you'll just say, hey, I remember that. The only question is, will you come with me? No, seriously, get in the fucking butt! The year is somewhere between 2004 and 2006, I'm not very specific with this. The stuff I was able to scrub from the internet dates back as far as 2004. I would really love to know what year Spider-Man 3 began its promo tour, but the fact that in 2021 we had another Spider-Man 3 has made things really difficult to research for this video. So thank you, MCU Spider-Man. You always ruin everything! But I can't stay mad at you, I love you. Welcome back to the pre-Spider-Man 3 years, unless you weren't born yet, in which case, welcome. This is all gonna be very foreign to you. Because there was a time when the hype for Spider-Man 3 was off the charts. But we're not there yet. If the ending of Spider-Man 2 was anything to go by, the Green Goblin would be factoring into this story in a big way, with Harry Osborn taking up the mantle. And so naturally, Spider-Man fans were speculating how would this new Green Goblin be different to the previous one, and there was some speculation that Harry could maybe go on to become the Hobgoblin, and that's certainly what I thought back when I was a kid as well. Now, unlike any Spider-Man movie before it, Spider-Man 3 launched at a renaissance for the internet age, where forums and notice boards were giving fans much more of a voice than they'd ever had before, and just booming in popularity, so Spider-Man 3 saw a fan speculation and fan artwork boom as fans would make their own posters and speculate on who the villains would be and how they would look. And guys, it's easy to poke fun from today's perspective. We live in a time where you can just get Adobe Photoshop with a subscription fee. And it's, I suppose, affordable depending on your financial situation. But like, your average schnook does have access to it. Not to mention, the general consumer computer is a lot more powerful than it used to be. Back in the mid-2000s, this stuff was a lot less accessible and a lot more difficult to use. Professional standard software was not so accessible to the consumer. So back at that time, this stuff was pretty mind-blowing. Let's fast forward now to our very first look at Spider-Man 3. And at the forefront of this newly blossomed promotional campaign is the black suit. And sure, that's, that's exciting and all, but it can only mean one thing. Venom is on the way. Now, I can only think of one time when Venom wasn't the most popular Spider-Man villain among fans, and that was prior to when Venom was created. Ever since his creation, he's been a fan favorite. And so naturally, everybody lost their minds. There were questions about the casting of Topher Grace as Eddie Brock, given that he didn't really fit the typical Venom archetype. He's not the ultra hairy bodybuilder that Eddie Brock in the 90s was, that's for sure. But I think that concern was just eclipsed by the fact that we were finally going to be seeing Venom on the big screen. And as a kid, I was super excited. The thing was, in the trailers and promo material for this film, they were very secretive about Venom. There were certainly teasers for him, but nothing showing us a clear glimpse at him. At least nothing to an official capacity, because back then I would scour the internet every single day. Oh yeah, back when I was a kid, back I would say like a pre-2006 time. Every day after school, I would hop on my dad's Apple Mac and really dive deep into the internet to try and find a first glimpse at what Venom would look like in Spider-Man 3. I typed Spider-Man 3 Venom in on Google search engine. Yeah, to me this was the height of sleuthing back then, but I did this religiously. 
nothing would stop me from first thing getting home and typing Spider-Man 3 Venom on Google Images. And one fateful day, I thought I'd finally found it. Ta-da! This is Venom in Spider-Man 3. Yep, I genuinely believe this. This, for a short period of time, was my desktop wallpaper on my little profile on my dad's old Apple Mac. Let's ignore the fact that it's a Spider-Man 1 render there. Let's ignore the fact it says Summer 2006. Let's ignore the fact that Carnage is there. I mean, I fully believe Carnage was going to be in the film at this point anyways. Let's ignore Van Diesel up there as well. At that point, I had no comprehension of the professionalism that would go into movie posters, and so I thought, you know, slip-ups like this would just, you know, be a thing that came part of the course. And giving this credence was the fact that there were variants of this poster as well, or at least this render of Venom made its way into a few other fan-made posters, which I also fully believed were real. Until eventually my dad had to sit me down and explain to me that they weren't and that our first look at Venom was still yet to come. In hindsight today, yeah, it's pretty damn obvious, but like, put myself back into my old head. This was exciting, and I mean, yeah, that's a Spider-Man 1 render, but you don't really, you know, differentiate those things from new renders at the age of... How old was I again? Hey, little pup, how old are you? Wait, what are you doing in my room? Dad! Oh, shut up, pup! But not to worry, we had a piece of artwork which was much more in line with the actual promotional artwork of the Spider-Man 3 movie. And this, admittedly, I can see why I really believe this. It's got that rainy aesthetic, that very murky blue that the Spider-Man 3 posters had. Whoever did this one back in the past was clearly of quite a higher caliber, it must have had quite a good PC, must have had access to some good software. And you know, aside from my objections to Venom having visible nipples, this wasn't bad. Although yeah, it does look very much like a naked man in black ink. And jeez, imagine having Venom without a big white spider on his chest, can you imagine? Oh! Man, some of these, in hindsight, were really, really funny. Like, really, really funny. There was, of course, more to the Spider-Man 3 hype cycle than just Venom and the Green Goblin, as the Sandman would also be introduced in Spider-Man 3. And going by more fan posters and manips, it's safe to say that people were expecting this guy to have a bit of a more apocalyptic impact than he ended up having. But hey, people were really making use of the sand visuals from the Mummy film, which I guess is kind of smart for 2005 internet. And going forward, we definitely get clearer looks at Sandman, so these artworks were a little less speculative for how Sandman would look than the Venom ones. But like the Venom ones, some of these are really hilarious in hindsight. This one here, in particular, is just really, really funny to me. In a way that it definitely would not have been back when I was a kid. And that's not down to any humor flying over my head or anything, I just took things way more seriously as a kid. Like. There's nothing about this that should even be fun. He's just forcing his head down, and it is, there's nothing sexual about it or anything. It's just the simplicity of this is just really, really funny to me. Is it funny to you? If it's not, then you're probably a bit homophobic. Yeah, that's, that's the narrative I'll go with. Then, one very eventful day came. An unfinished version of the Spider-Man 3 theatrical trailer leaked online. Notable differences including previs VFX in the place of the finished versions that we would see in the theatrical trailer. But this was just a little bit longer. There was just a little, 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 little bit at the end, which we all wanted to see. Because this was the formation of Venom. And I remember pausing this, trying to pinpoint the right moment where I could see a good look at him, and he looked fantastic. And I needed to see more. I needed to see more of this Venom. And also, upon reflection, he does look quite similar to this piece of fan art here with the nipples. But a fateful day came in the March of 2007, where Medicom Toys would reveal their Spider-Man 3 line, which included just the basic red and blue Spider-Man, which is pretty sweet, actually. I would love to get my hands on one of these, but that's just, that's not going to happen. Because I wouldn't even know where to begin looking for them, and they're probably fuck off expensive, so just, no. That's a, that's a dream we're just gonna let die. They also had a black suited version, which gave us a nice clear look at Spider-Man's new spider emblem on his black suit. But then there came something which I don't quite think we were supposed to see. Our first very clear look at Venom. 
And he didn't actually seem to match the one that was in the unfinished trailer. Hmm. You know, in hindsight, it's actually a little weird how close this was to the release date of the film, which would be May the 4th, at least in the UK anyway. Time really does distort with age, doesn't it? I could, I could swear the wait was way longer between this review and the actual film itself. So looking at Venom here, people were really excited to get their first look. I was really excited to get my first look, and I think the general consensus was people were disappointed with how kind of slim and scrawny he looks on this figure here. He doesn't really look any bulkier than Spider-Man himself. But I got the thing I wanted more than anything else, a nice, big, wide jaw full of fangs. This would be the first of many little looks we'd be getting at Venom, because it wouldn't be long before we hit the jackpot. New Spider-Man 3 trailers, which were very revealing. We'd see John Jameson's return from space with the symbiote aboard the ship. Harry Osborn fully clad in his father's goblin gear. A city engulfed in sand and Venom playing a really active role in this story, causing trouble wherever he went. These new trailers blew my freaking mind. Everything that the previous Spider-Man 3 trailers had been holding out on had been revealed here, and it was awesome. And to me, today, in the present, these trailers are the absolute height of all nostalgia. Move over, Doug Walker, because this is the thing I associate with nostalgia. Why? Because none of this was in the fucking movie. Again, I really feel like I should have known. Ah, silly old pup. So gullible. There he is, officer. Hey, what are you doing staring at that miner? Wait, it's not what you think. Yeah, tell that to the judge. No, look, it's literally me. It's literally me. Ha, huh. hope I don't grow up to be like that in the future. Take that, asshole. Stop fucking swearing, son. Sorry, dad. There were so many clips here reused from previous Spider-Man films with the suit recolored to black. So many reuses of existing Green Goblin footage, but the question, how did they get Venom in here? There's no live action Venom, how is he here? All of these trailers were watermarked with Wormy T, so I'm assuming that he made these, or she, I don't know what ge they, I don't know what gender a Wormy T would be. I don't even know if I'm supposed to pronounce this as Wormy T, what if it's Wormit? I don't fucking know, but Wormit must have been a very talented varmint because, like, these are edited shots of Spawn. And I guess it shouldn't be a surprise that Spawn was the blueprint of a lot of Venom fan art. Damn you, Spawn, you deceiver! I want to see what Venom looks like and not just in action figure form. I want to see how he's gonna look in the movie. Sony, why are you so secretive? Oh, there he is. So naturally, as the film got closer, we got the release of the toys. And with the toys came new renders. Fuck me, these are garish. The Raimi Spider-Man suit was not that bright, but- Hold up! What that right there? Is Venom. And he is just everything I ever dreamed he would be. That right there is Venom, my friends. I love it. Or is it because new behind the scenes images have come about and his mouth is definitely a lot smaller. And that's my main cause of concern right now. Turns out it was nothing. So obvious departure here is that this Venom has webbing over his suit, just like the black Spider-Man before him. Not that one. Uh, can you believe actually, this was before Miles Morales existed. It feels like he's always been there, you know? But this, yeah, we got undeniably a look at the Spider-Man 3 Venom and I was very, very happy with how it was shaping up to be. And of course, with all the toys out, I begged my parents to take me to Toys R Us and pick one up. The Venom I got was this one that came with this goo pod of like this uh, silvery goo and it had this big chomping jaw that came with it. I liked the figure, but I was a little disheartened when I saw that my Spider-Man figure was actually taller than my Venom figure because for some reason they changed the scale from six inch to five inch. And it turns out that among collectors, this was a huge bone of contention. Not only that, but the fact that Venom was purple. Now, the character in the past has been shaded in purple and blue and other tones, but Venom wears a black suit. There's a reason why the Spider-Man suit is called the black suit. So to have like a three-dimensional action figure in purple just didn't make a whole lot of sense. But it does turn out that there is a reason behind this. The actual practical Venom outfit in Spider-Man 3 actually was purple and was then color graded into black. Or at least it was like a purple black, you know, like black with a purple sheen to it. Not sure why they made it purple. Maybe they intended on having more of a nod to the comics. Maybe that's just the color they wanted the Venom suit to reflect. As in the little glimpses at Venom we got in the final trailer, he definitely wasn't purple. Wait, vinyl trailer Venom? 
Once again, very, very fleeting glimpses of Venom, but we got a whole lot more in the Spider-Man 3 final trailer, including a little reprise of Venom chomping at the camera, which we saw in the unused trailers that were not finished, and evidently so, because Venom's design here was looking quite a bit different. Bit more sticky, bit more gooey. I can't think of a good word for that, that doesn't sound disgusting. As well as just some split-second shots of him, once again one of which having a normal human-sized mouth, so I really still had some questions. Was there false advertisement going on here? Well, the Burger King toys certainly seemed to feature a Venom that had a big smile. Hey! Burger King toys! So these look pretty sweet. Like, these were oddly detailed. Like, more so than like a Funko Pop. Like, for example, the Tobey Maguire likeness on this little Spider-Man figure here, which I own. Thank you, Luke. It's really, really not far off, which is surprising. Especially considering the nosediving quality that the 5-inch scale Spider-Man 3 toy line had. There was also a 6-inch line after the film's release, which was sure to piss off collectors even more, that had already spent their hard-earned cash on the 5-inch version, but if it's any solace, the 6-inch release was a whole ass mess of its own. I mean, just look at the black Spider-Man action figure. You can barely move his head up, he's just permanently looking down. He's literally asymmetrical, his shoulders bend differently on each side. How the fuck? But the Venom figure was pretty sweet, actually. With the release of the Spider-Man 3 movie, obviously came the release of the Spider-Man 3 game. Yup, Spider-Man 3, The Battle Within. An old Java game that you could play on the Spider-Man 3 website. This consisted of three levels. One with the new Goblin, one with the Sandman, and one with Venom. And these were basically just a series of quick time event kind of deals. You click your mouse when the spider emblem reaches the center of the dot, you know how this works. I found it really difficult as a kid. I don't know how hard I'd find it now. I don't know if you can even play it anymore. I have tried, I've given it a go, I've tried the Wayback Machine, I've tried going on the Sony Pictures website, and I can't seem to find a trace of this thing. Unless... No. Freaking. Way. They go- Look at all this! Rescue Mary Jane there- Oh man. Oh jeez, okay, we're, we're gonna be having a good afternoon here. You are as beautiful as the day I lost you. Can I can I zoom it in or something? Nah, nah, this is zoomed as I think it gets. Okay, no worries, let's play the game. Let's see if I'm any good at it. I, I did good there. I raised the symbiote power. That's uh, I used the power of the symbiote. Yeah, this is way easier than when I was a kid, man. Like... It's crazy. It might have been lag. Maybe it was lag. I'm gonna blame it on lag. Ah. Oh, that was poor. Ah, oh, no! Okay, this is where I got stuck in the past, I think. Wait. Wait, where's the- where's the rest of it? Where- where is the Venom part? I know they updated this every so often, so maybe this version doesn't have ve- Well, that sucks! So what do I do here? Okay, what's the what's the web button? Oh, I should have looked at the instructions, shouldn't I? Oh, I have to. The web is provided for me. <laughs> how do I how do I jump again? Can I just jump on the building instead? Yeah, I can. Oh, fuck me. Oh, I'm running out of. I'm on the clock. I didn't even realize that. Oh man, Mary Jane's gonna die, and it's more my fault! Ah, don't tell me I gotta start again. Yeah, nah. Nah, we... I'm okay playing less of that, to be honest. Oh, yeah, also there were those uh, video games that came to consoles, weren't there? Ah, we'll talk about those another time. So May came, and so did Spider-Man 3. With a lot of fans wondering what happened here. And as a kid, even if I was in denial initially, I did kind of come to feel that. But I don't think this was really Spider-Man 3's fault. And I'm really kind of only speaking from my own subjective experience here. Today, I think Spider-Man 3 is fantastic, and I've made a video on why. It's in my Marvel playlist. We've got hours upon hours of this stuff. I've heard it's great for you to fall asleep to. I'll put a link in the pinned comment. But speaking from my own experience, I think that Spider-Man 3 had to live up to an unprecedented amount of fan hype, especially with Venom in there. 
And this was at a time where fans were really, really flexing their creative muscles with how well they could replicate these movie posters and concept arts. Not to mention how convinced I was by the Wormy T trailers. And you know what, I actually believed the Wormy T trailers until the very release. So yeah, I was a little disappointed when the new Goblin didn't suit up fully in his father's armor. Like, the whole fake trailer and the whole fake movie poster thing was, uh, kind of a novel thing at this point, or at least, you know, the most accessible it had ever been, and this was definitely a boom. Obviously, we're a little wiser now to these things than we were back then, or, or maybe I'm trying to speak for everyone when I can really only speak for myself. I was a kid, and I got sealed right into the hype culture surrounding Spider-Man 3. This was like my first experience of feeling integrated into the internet's hype culture. And I get the feeling that the same can probably be said of a lot of kids who grew to resent Spider-Man 3 for not living up to these fan-made trailers and concepts and such. When you're not that age, it's kind of impossible not to build these things up to an unrealistic degree when there's so much material out there that's been made by fans expressing their dreams for what's going to be on the big screen, when in actuality what we got was a perfectly worthy sequel to Spider-Man 2. One that would wrap up the story between Pizza, Harry, and MJ. Today, I feel like we can kind of look back and laugh. And that's what I wanted to do today, is just take a look back at that time. Just a peek through the looking glass of pre-Spider-Man 3. Because to me, this stuff is the absolute epitome of nostalgia. So after I take you guys home back to whatever year it is while you're watching this, for your next adventure, I suggest re-watching Spider-Man 3 without all of that hype culture in your head. And maybe you'll have a little fun. Maybe you'll be able to make peace with a part of yourself that maybe hurts a little bit. Maybe your opinion won't change, but hey, you tried. So now we wait for me to be released on bail, and then we'll just hop back into the time machine and uh, go right ahead. I wonder how long that's going to take. So what do you guys think? If you enjoyed this video and you want to support more like it, be sure to hit that big, beautiful subscribe button. And of course, in the description below are links to different social media feeds, including the Patreon. If you're feeling extra generous like the following people, who are JK Strife, Marcus Ward, Sirius the Skeptic, Biotin Arts, Mr. SP, David 20 Covers, Sergio, John Comey, Shodin, George is Lost, Legendary Ray Ray, Cheesemaster769, Adam Myers, and Fayalan Schwarzenthal. Thank you guys, you are the best of the best, but as for the rest of you, thank you so much for watching guys, and have a great day. Okay.